Well, good morning and welcome to Zen Fits. Let me get this thing on here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, the title of this talk is, um, by the way, it's a beautiful Saturday morning. Kind of gray a little bit in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. But then you two are at your center of the world. And let's restore our center. So the title of this talk is uh, From Howdy Doody to Pinocchio. And uh, so I was basically got the idea when I was writing this morning, which is where my ideas come from. And um, I remember the first time I saw Howdy Doody. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was 1950, and I was in um, seventh grade, I guess, and uh, sixth grade, seventh grade. And I was at a friend's house, and I had a big TV with a little bitty screen, and uh, there was Howdy Doody, and... Uh, and after the howdy, was, then they showed a, uh, uh, a, a chef uh, cutting vegetables, a vegetable cutter. <laughs> and uh, then, they, then they also showed a lot of uh, old black and white westerns from the silent movies or whatever. But, uh, but anyway, so the title of this talk is From Howdy Doody to Pinocchio. And I got to thinking about TV and... Um, when TV came uh, to uh, American consciousness um, in the late 40s and then in the 50s, uh, I don't think we got a TV until, um, geez, it, well, it was in the early 50s. And um, it was like an altar. Uh, there was a great movie, uh, Avalon, I remember seeing, which described the coming of TV in the 50s uh, and the fragmentation of family units. Uh, before TV, there was radio. And that radio was an, audit, an oratory, you know, a sound. Um, you know, and it has a different um, effect than TV. Um, but but uh, the 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 let me go back to here anyway. These puppets uh, were, were created by my, uh, my uh, Uncle Tommy's son, Tommy Jr., who uh, was a puppeteer, and he, and he was in California, L.A., and he was the movie stars and all of that, and these were the, his, some of his creations. The uh, Herm Hermit, Hermit Kelly, the, her the uh, famous clown, and, and the little gnome uh, in the fairy tales, and... Uh, he died of AIDS in the 80s, but uh, that's not the point here. Uh, the point is that puppets dance on a string, and Howdy Doody was a puppet. And the story of Pinocchio was that he was a puppet on the strings, but he became a real boy. He became real. He was able to cut through the strings. He was able to, to, uh, to, trend, to, to uh, see the strings that were manipulating him and that's what TV is if, if you um, TV basically is an advertising delivery system in the same way cigarettes are a nicotine delivery system so TV delivers and of course now TV's child is the internet um, and the and cable and the internet and all of that but it all began with the screen the screen. You're looking at me through a screen, you see, and uh, so the the the. Uh, I don't think we really, it's very difficult. I think it's a, that per, we it's our personal journey to realize the brainwashing, uh, the indoctrination, the subliminal messages that we absorb without being conscious of it through the uh, electronic medium of uh, TV and its accessories. These are the strings that manipulate us into buying stuff we don't need or having thoughts we don't need or voting for people we don't like <laughs> or don't really want or need, let's put it that way. There's a difference, I think, between wanting and needing. Uh, TV creates and its advertising creates desire. Of course, that is what Buddha called the cause of suffering. Craving, craving to become better than you are through some product, you see. 
So the whole manipulation of TV uh, from its get-go with that vegetable cutter TV ad, my first ad that I saw, was that you need this product to be better than you are. So it creates TV advertising, creates a dissatisfaction with who you are, you see. So you, you need something. So it's a basic instilling of a dissatisfaction with life. And Buddha called that dukkha. <laughs> this basic dissatisfaction with life. Something is missing. We need something. What is it? And if we don't have it, somebody's to blame. So the, it works, the TV advertising, the puppet works two ways, you see. Somebody is pulling your strings. Who is it, you see? The government, the liberals, the conservatives. They're pulling your strings, you see. And so the, the TV points out the fact that you're a puppet and somebody's making you a puppet, you see, taking away your freedom, you see. So, the, so it, or you need this product or this person or this savior uh, to make you better, uh, to make you feel free. But the whole basic, basic delivery system is the, is the insidious, subliminal sense that something's wrong with you and you need something better and I can provide it. The salesman, you see. Either the, the, uh, the product that will save you and the medicine that will save you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, can't, I, I can't stop. This is so funny. <laughs> the ads on TV about Peroni's disease, you know. So, <laughs> so if you've got they hold, they hold up a crooked cucumber and say, "Well, if your if your penis looks like that, you may have Peroni's disease," <laughs> and it shouldn't be that way. So you should so go get some medicine. You see, and I remember uh, some years ago <laughs> when my when I had a crooked penis and it looked like that, and so I went to the doctor and says, "Oh, it's Peroni's." <laughs> And he, what can I do about it? He says, "Well, we'll find a find a crooked vagina." <laughs> anyway, it went away. <laughs> so anyway, I just I'm sorry, I digress. So <laughs> I think it was an intern that said that. <laughs> find a woman with a crooked vagina. Okay. Anyway, we're talking about from from howdy duty dancing on a string by the subliminal messages of TV and advertising and internet and memes and the whole catastrophe and moving towards Pinocchio who didn't want to be a puppet anymore. He wanted to be real. So see, TV captured our center. Now I remember and we all remember and we all can look in our living room and some people don't have a TV there. What? Where's your TV? Oh, it's hidden. Or it's in the other room. Oh, we don't have a TV. But most people have a big TV there, and the TVs get bigger, cheaper. Pretty soon you have the whole wall will be a TV screen. Um, it's moving towards that, um, you know. And, and uh, I think we have a 64-inch TV. And, um, but the point is that it's the center of the room. Not, not the altar, uh, not, not uh, Jesus or Mary or uh, the Buddha or whatever. That's not the center of the room, you see. The TV is the center, and the family sits around the TV. And uh, this happened in the 50s. Uh, the TV came, plop, and everybody sat. I remember watching. You would sit there and watch the, um, the, the that propeller, that, <laughs> that signal, but there was no stations on. You'd sit there and watch it, waiting for the station to come on. You know, the, I forgot what what do you call it? The the uh, the, the 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 station signal. It would just be a propeller. You know, you'd sit there and watch it, waiting. <laughs> Any minute now. Any, you know, but uh, but but uh, the 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 TV became a so there was a shift in consciousness from family networks and external world and uh, in real real contact like like the earth to an electronic world and so suddenly the, the tv images became the center of consciousness. so what do people talk about is what they saw on tv what do we know it's what we see on tv 
any ideas we have, it's what we got from TV. So the, the center, you see, our center became this TV. So, so that became the, and then the TV delivery system delivers a sense of dissatisfaction, that you need something. And of course, this is the fuel that drove the consumer economy that, that replaced the military economy of World War II. See, all the factories created tanks. And then the war was over. What are you going to do with the fact? We're going to create refrigerators <laughs> and cars. You know, how do you make people buy all this stuff? Well, we got TV. So we got the ads, you see. And so it all fit together. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with TV. It is what it is. I mean, you can't, you know, you can get rid of it or not have it or whatever. That's fine. But the fact is, this is the water we swim in. The internet is not the TV, it's the cell phone. It's a portable TV, you see. So it's just like, uh, you know, the used to be God was in a temple in the middle of the city, and now, uh, and then he got in the Bible, so you could carry God around with you in the Bible. It used to be the TV was in your living room, and now you carry it around in your pocket. You see, it's the same idea. It's It's the... And that then put, you got it on your wrist, you know, and you put, you put it on your phone, you put it on your eyeglasses, so you can, you know, it'll pretty be a chip in your head. But the, but the idea here is that this is a subtle, subliminal indoctrination of a shift of your center from being able to tell what's real and not real to believing what the images tell you. And so we don't believe all the images, but we select the images, the channels and whatever, to believe, you see. So the reference has changed, and we don't even know it because it's everywhere. It's all pervasive. Um, so I used, I like TV. I don't, I watch British mysteries. And, uh, but I use, but I see TV more metaphorically so that it becomes, um, well, just like Howdy Doody. And you just have a look, see Howdy Doody, well... You know, as a child, it's real, uh, but for me, it's a metaphor. So I'm able to see Howdy Doody as being the um, the truth of advertising is that you are dancing on a puppet. <laughs> so Howdy Doody is telling you the truth. Howdy Doody as a puppet is telling you who you are. You see, now that that would be metaphor. Howdy Doody is you. You are you are Howdy Doody. Howdy Doody is you is a metaphor. You are Howdy Doody. Well, you see the metaphor. If you're if you're if you're indoctrinated by TV, you can't see that. Well, that's crazy. I'm not Howdy Doody. Howdy Doody's in the TV screen. Howdy Doody's a puppet here. You see. You know, well, that's literal thinking, and that's that's the that's what TV has indoctrinated us into seeing the world. We've lost this the metaphorical thinking. I mean, the metaphorical window is that, well, there's Howdy Doody, and you can enjoy the puppet show, but you also see with the same eye, the same mind, that this Howdy Doody is telling you the truth, that TV isn't making you a puppet. And the strings are not are hidden, you see. So the suffering that you feel, the dissatisfaction that the advertising makes you feel, is not going to be... Uh, removed by getting the product the TV is selling you or buying that political person or getting that ideology or that religion you see, that's what the TV is getting you to uh, buy. The truth is that you're okay as you are. You know, that, <laughs> that these products and these saviors will not make you any better than you are, you see. So then the TV, the howdy duty then, reveals to you the strings with which the very TV is manipulating you. I see. That's when you become a real boy. <laughs> when you see that it's all an illusion. It's not real. It's fun, but it's not real. It's not real. So all of the messages are delusion. You don't they just don't make any sense. You don't you you know, the center has shifted. You've taken your center back from that TV God and brought it back into you, and you're able to tell the difference between the real and the unreal and not be deceived by subliminal advertising. So many of my friends and uh, 
pass around these uh, political memes and they don't understand what they're passing around. They, they think it's truth. And if you question it, they get angry. Well, what do you mean? That's true? They don't, we've lost the ability to read the subliminal messages, you see. The, the what's underhand, the we, just, we just believe what's on top of the table and we don't see what's beneath the table. We don't see what's going on beneath the covers. We don't see what's, what's happening, uh, the currents underneath the waves. We don't see the currents. We just get lost in the waves and we're fighting with the waves. And I was just a bunch of foam, you see. We don't see the currents that are driving us. And the currents can be seen through the subliminal advertising, you see. It's right there on the screen. But you have to, but there has to be a shift. You have to want to take your consciousness back, your discrimination back, your reason back from having invested it in the TV set and in the advertisers and the anchors and the whatever, you see, which has been a 50, 60 year indoctrination now. It's, you know, we've been, you know, how many generations now have grown up uh, watching TV as, an, as a child, sitting in front of that TV screen. It's, it's changed consciousness. And we've lost the ability to discriminate between the real and the unreal, you see. And that's basically what Zen Buddhism, what Buddhism is, and all of the non-dual traditions, is rediscovering or taking back that ability to cut through the Gordian knot and tell the difference between the real and the unreal. Anyway, thanks for dropping in, and I hope you become Pinocchio. <laughs> Thank you.